Hello everyone, today I would like to give you an overview of IDCSE Chemistry for those of you who are taking the exam in 2024. I'll walk you through the syllabus. I'll show you the more important chapters. But at the beginning, I'll make a quick comparison between the exam boards of IGCSE Chemistry. There are three exam boards when it comes to IGCSE Chemistry. There is Cambridge, Edexcel, and Oxford. I don't recommend students to take Oxford exams at the moment because we still don't have many past paper exams for students to practice from. So let's just stick to Edexcel and Cambridge. With Edexcel, we have great advantages. It's quite easier. Um, in terms of the content, there are far less details when it comes to topics like electrolysis, organic chemistry. But the issue when it comes to Edexcel comes with the fact there's only two exam papers. There's paper one, which is worth 61%, and paper two, which is worth 39%. Now, in case a student didn't do well in paper one, then they will have little room for improvement in paper two. Now, this is not the case with Cambridge because have three exam papers. There's paper four, which is worth 50%, paper two, which is worth 30%. That's the multiple choice paper. And we have paper six, which many students find very easy, which is worth 20%. Now, in case a student didn't do well in one exam paper for some reason, then they will have room for improvement with two more exam papers. Another issue with Edexcel IGCC chemistry is the curve. The curve to score an A star or to score a nine with IGCC chemistry is quite harder than that with Cambridge. Cambridge exams rely a lot on understanding. So students who understand chemistry, understand the concepts, find it very easy to score an A star. This is not the case with Edexcel chemistry. As I stated, the curve is higher than that with Cambridge. Ironically, it's easier to pass IGCC chemistry in Edexcel because there's a lot of memorization. If you could just manage to memorize the content, then passing this subject is much easier in Edexcel than Cambridge. You do get a lot of questions where you just have to state a definition or write a whole procedure and written in the textbook. So if passing chemistry is your target, then I would recommend to take Edexcel IGCSE Chemistry. Let's have a quick overview of IGCSE Chemistry. I've divided this subject into 23 topics. There are short and simple topics that will just take you one lesson to finish, such as states of matter, uh, atomic structure, the periodic table. And there are longer topics that will take you two to three lessons to finish. Although it's a bit early to talk about exams, but it's good to have an idea that there are certain topics in chemistry that come on every exam paper and they're worth more marks than the other topics. These are five topics. There is bonding, the mole concept, rate of reaction, equilibrium, and organic chemistry. Along the year, you need to master these topics and that will secure you a very good mark in this subject. For the last part of this video, I will guide you through the process of learning, practicing, and preparing for IDCSE exam. The process stops first with the lesson. Nowadays, there's a lot of resources when it comes to IDCSE chemistry. There's your school teacher, there's online lessons, and there are tutors who offer lessons for IGCSE chemistry. You just have to be aware of three things. First thing is that what you're watching has to be same as your exam board. So you can't be watching a lesson for Edexcel chemistry while you're taking Cambridge exam. Another issue is that the lesson has to be exam oriented. You can get the information from anywhere on the internet, but you really need that lesson to solve questions from your exam board. That will make it much easier for you to solve by your own later. Third thing is that practical part of chemistry. Sciences in general are involve a lot of practicals. So for that reason, the lesson has somehow to involve practical questions, videos, simulations. You just need to see those practicals because almost 50% of the exam questions are either directly or indirectly asking you about these practicals. So unless you've done those practicals in school, or you've watched them through a simulation, that will make it very easy for you to solve these questions. The second part of the learning process is the one you do by your own. You have to revise what you've learned from your teacher within 48 hours. I always tell my students to learn the concept, to learn what they've taken in the lesson, no more than two days after the lesson. That will help you to retain the information for much longer. If you wait more than that, then you're very likely to forget almost half of what you've learned. 
So make sure you just go through the notes after the lesson and that will help you to remember almost all what you learned from your teacher. If you wait longer, then you have to put so much effort to remember what you've learned in the lesson. The next part, which is the third part of this learning process, is the most important part. That's the time when you start to practice. You need to practice solving exam papers very early, from the beginning of the year. So your teacher will give you a homework. The homework has to be from classified exam questions related to the topic you took with your teacher. Now, there is an order of solving in chemistry. Many students tend to solve paper two questions because they find it easy to just pick the right option, but that's not the right way of practicing. You need to practice first paper four, which is written answers. Writing paper four answers will help you to remember and will deepen your understanding of the concept. Then do paper six if it's available for this topic because many topics don't involve paper six questions like the mole concept, for instance. And once you're done with paper four and six, stop doing paper two questions because paper two questions are the most challenging ones in this subject. Many topics in IUCSE chemistry are connected. So for instance, topics like redox, electrolysis, metals, rate of reaction and equilibrium are very connected. So you need to study these topics as a block, study them together. So you build connections between these topics. I tend to give my students tests that involve these topics together. So that would help the students to study them and build those important connections. That would make it much easier for you to learn them as a one large topic than learning them separately. The last part of this learning process is the one you do before your exam. I tend to finish the syllabus by March. So we will have two months to prepare for the exam. During those last two months, uh, we do full exam papers. We start from the old exam papers. We start from 2016 all the way until we get to the more recent ones. I ask my students to save six exam papers uh, to do as mock tests. Those mock tests will help the students to pace themselves so they know exactly how long it takes them to finish one full exam. You really need to finish 10 to 15 minutes before the allocated time for the exam. That will give you time at the end to like revise your answers, fill in the gaps, and make sure you've solved all of the questions in the exam paper. I hope that this was helpful. Now, if you have any question related to this subject or related to biology, just send me a message and we'll answer you as soon as possible.